Hey, it's Matt here from Tradesman Digital Marketing. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through how to optimize a Google Ads campaign in 2022. Now, I've created a nice little list of all the things we go about doing to optimize our campaign. And this is a lot of stuff. It's not everything, uh, but it is a very good start. And if you do these bid adjustments and you try these optimizations out, chances are you will have a very successful account. That being said, I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step on what we do when it comes to optimizing an account. The first thing is bid adjustments. So bid adjustments can be, you know devices locations audiences i'll just come in here to the actual uh let's do devices devices is easy enough we can actually adjust our bid for what device might be performing better might be performing worse so, so say we want a lot of calls and most of the time if we're doing a call only campaign or we only want call leads from a search campaign we'll completely get rid of computers and tablets we'll just set a negative 100 percent decrease when it comes to bid adjustments and we won't pop up for them but sometimes you can still get really good leads from computers and tablets uh, you just have to adjust the bid adjustment and that might be as simple as either leaving it blank or decreasing it by five or ten percent just so it's on par with your actual mobile phones and you don't want to get rid of all your search volume otherwise you won't be able to get enough clicks to get enough leads so it's nice to you know just modify like one device a little bit that way you still get clicks from that certain device another thing you can do is modify location so say you know Hamilton's doing really good we could you know adjust the bid by five percent or maybe Mississauga's not doing well we can apply a negative bid adjustment so it you know mitigates the cost per lead and we get more a, a better cost per lead as opposed to you know just letting it sit and just getting what we get that way we can take the initiative and adjust things on a more micro level um, another thing is the actual days of the week. So we can adjust the bid adjustments for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I don't normally recommend running on weekends just because we don't see the best conversion rates there and the best cost per leads. But if you wanted to run Saturdays and Sundays, you could you know, run them and maybe just apply a negative bid adjustment and those cost per leads might be the exact same or better than uh, weekdays. It really depends on your circumstance. But that being said, generally one day out of the week will perform much better than the other days. And generally we see like one day is just not that great. So we'll apply a negative bid adjustment there as well. You can also apply negative bid adjustments in your audience segments once you have enough data in there to maybe uh, try and go after a certain audience segments that just really resonates with your customers and you're seeing a very, very good uh, cost per lead there or a good conversion. The next thing is bidding strategy. And I really recommend using a maximized click strategy for most service-based campaigns. If you're trying to get leads, this allows you to gather enough data in the account to make good decisions, figure out what keywords are winners, what keywords are losers, and then optimize from there. Once we have about 30 conversions in the account, we switch over to target CPA. This allows Google to take the reins, optimize better, and you'll see a better conversion rate with it. And generally it's the better way to go when it comes to optimizing, but you need enough data in the account to hand the reins over to Google. Uh, that's a very good optimization tip. It really allows you to guide Google, then hand the reins over and allow Google to optimize for what you want to go after. Now I'm going to combine the next two, building out ad groups and finding new keywords. So essentially we like to continuously add keywords into our campaign, not at a crazy amount, because if we're trying too many experimental things, it's generally going to blow up in your face because you're just not going to be able to pick winners and losers. But you know, five or 10% of the keywords being new keywords and always trying and testing them and figuring out which ones are working, which ones aren't. And that being said, once you do find out new keywords, build out their own ad group, give them the custom ad copy they deserve. And this will help bump your conversion rates up, it'll bump your click through rate up, it will just make your account overall a lot more successful. And I highly recommend continually building out ad groups. Do you always have to have like 100 ad groups? Absolutely not. But always try new keywords, try and figure out what can work, what might not work, what will work, and just always test a little bit by little bit. And chances are you'll have a very successful campaign in a few months or so. Now, the last thing in our account section for optimization is conversion tracking. And I recommend using a third-party conversion tracking when it comes to calls. So if you are tracking calls, I would recommend using a call rail or some other third-party tracking service. They just do a much better job than Google's forwarding number. Uh, and I like to see all the data as accurately as possible. It allows us to make better decisions. And that's why I generally recommend using that. With that being said, making sure that if you have email leads, making sure your you know global site tag and your trigger tag are set up properly, this will allow you to actually get the data you need to optimize. And if they're not working correctly, which in most campaigns, they're not working correctly, 
uh, it's going to be substantially detrimental to your ability to actually optimize and you're, you're not going to be able to make a accurate decision and your account is really going to suffer for it. So please make sure you have good conversion tracking. Take the time, come up here to tools and settings, make your conversions, make sure they're accurate, make sure they're tracking and make sure you verify them. So that's the last thing in the account uh, level. The next thing are, are keywords. So you have no actual data in your account. It's a brand new account, no previous keyword history whatsoever. Your actual keywords are going to be guesses because there's really no way of knowing whether or not a keyword is going to convert. Can you make, you know, educated guesses and go after high buy intent keywords? Absolutely. And you should do so. Uh, but that being said, go after keywords that have high buying intent. So if, you know, we're selling pools, make sure that the keyword has a buying intent behind it, that the person is clearly trying to make a decision or trying to purchase your service and make sure there's a good chance of them actually clicking on uh, your phone number or sending an email survey. Don't just put, you know, pools, pools or fiberglass pools. This is too vague. Um, and generally, we don't know what those people are actually looking for. It could just be images of pools or, you know, pool local pools that they could go to. That's too vague. You know, pool and in ground pool installation near me, that is very specific. We know what the person is looking for. And more often than not, it will lead to a successful and highly qualified lead for your company. So that's one thing you should look at. Yes, the keywords are going to be based on guesses, but please make sure high buying intent keywords are around there and you're actually looking at them. Optimizing the keywords should be done by adding negatives and positives. Absolutely, they should be. And I recommend for most people using exact match. Recently, Google has released an update which switched match type. I'm not a big fan of it. And essentially what broad match modified used to be phrase match has now combined it. And I think phrase match is too lenient. So I, I would advise most service based businesses to switch over to exact match. That being said, you're always going to get search terms that you don't want to appear for. And on a weekly basis or however often you want to do this, I would suggest at least on a weekly basis at a minimum, come into your search terms report. This will show you the actual search terms people are typing in. And then you can see which ones you want to appear for, which ones you don't. If you don't want to appear for them, come over here to negative keywords, add them in as a negative, and that way you won't appear for them. You'll increase your conversion rate so you're not popping up for these keywords you don't want to pile up for, and it's a great way to optimize your account. The final thing when it comes to keywords is I would recommend getting at least 10 clicks inside the keyword before making a decision on it. I see a lot of people it'll have like, you know, five or six clicks and they'll just turn it off because there's no conversion with it. But I recommend at least 10 clicks. If you have two or more conversions with 10 clicks, that keyword is a winner. Please keep that keyword. If you have one lead or no leads, uh, chances are this is not going to be a winner. It's not going to be sustainable long term. Sometimes a 10 per 10% conversion rate is great, depends on the service you're in. But for most of our companies we work with, 10% isn't great. And I'd recommend two or more. If it has two or more, keep the keyword. If it has one or less, I would say pause the keyword. But that being said, it's unique to everyone's situation. But please make sure you have at least 10 clicks before making a decision. Anything less than 10 clicks, it's just not enough data and you're not going to be able to make an accurate decision. Now, moving on to ad copy. Ad copy is really fun. I enjoy actually writing ad copy out. Um, and it does take a lot of effort and time to build out successful ad copy. Now, your first ad copy is literally going to be based off guessing, much like your keywords, but make sure it is relevant and useful to your customer. That being said, you always want to be A-B testing your ad copy, which will give you the most success. What I recommend doing for ad copy is making sure that your keywords match your ad copy. So if someone types in fiberglass pool installation, their ad pops up and it says fiberglass pool installation or looking for fiberglass pool installation, you know, get a quote now. It's very relevant and it has a high message match, meaning that the actual keyword is very relevant to the ad and the ad is going to be very relevant to the landing page. So if you have a keyword that matches your ad and the ad matches the landing page, you're going to have a very high message match. Google loves message match. They're going to give you a high ad rank. They're going to give you a high landing page experience and they're going to give you essentially a discount on your ads. You're not going to have to pay as much per click and everything's going to work out well. But that being said, you have to go in and make sure the ads match the keywords. You have This takes time. You have to segment out your keywords, make sure they match the ad and the ad matches its individual landing page. This takes time, but it's definitely worth it. It will give you a massive boost in your Google ads account and it'll lead to a lot of success. The two last things here about ads are when coming up with ad copy, I generally like to look at the competition, see what they're doing. Most of the time it's very general. And what they'll do is they'll just add a whole bunch of keywords to one ad group and then they'll just run a very generic ad with it. This is very bad because it doesn't really speak or resonate with the customer. 
you really want your ad to speak to the customer. So like I said before, if someone's typing in fiberglass pool installation, make sure your ad is fiberglass pool installation, but also make it a little unique. Maybe add looking for fiberglass pool installation, you know, lifetime warranty, call now for a free quote. This is very unique and different than most competitors you'll see in your marketplace because a lot of them boast about themselves. What you need to do is really talk to the customer's problem and how you're going to solve the customer's problem. And adding on to that, you have to A-B test these ads. So every, you know, two weeks, or so you're going to come in here you're going to see one ad that is your main ad you're going to need all the clicks from it you're going to see another ad that's doing all right and then you'll see one ad that's pretty much shut off maybe it had one click and a whole bunch of impressions and it's just completely dead uh, you need to come in here take that third ad rewrite it and run it again or you know pause it and then create a new ad rewrite that one so you keep the data of the old one um, but always a b test these so add another ad in pause the the loser add another one in, try and challenge your current champion ad, the one that's in the first place, and always try and A-B test so you can get a higher click-through rate. Higher click-through rates lead to higher ad ranks, which lowers your cost per click, which leads to more leads, which leads to account success, which just makes everything a lot easier on your life and makes everything much better. So that's the final thing when it comes to ad copy, pause the losers and write new ads. And you know, it's going to take time to actually come up with, you know, winning ads, but it'll be definitely worth it because you'll have a very high click-through rate and Google likes high click-through rates. The final thing is landing pages. And I recommend keeping landing pages as simple as possible. I see so many people with websites where there's just so many moving parts. There's so many colors. There's so much things to do. There's five calls to action. And it just confuses people because people don't know what to do. They have, you know, two different emergency numbers. They have five different location numbers. They have two different email forms to fill in. And it's like, well, which one do I pick? And people go, well, you know, it just gives them options. And it's like, no, it causes cognitive overload and people are going to get stressed out and they're going to leave your landing page and find someone else. And you just wasted a whole bunch of money. So please, please, please keep your landing page simple. Make it nice, calm, easy to read. There's no moving parts. It's nice and simple. And yes, I know it may look boring. It may not look like your competitors and it's not all fancy and everything like that. But the job of the landing page is to convert, and that's its only job. The, your competitors who are using all these fancy landing pages or websites, they have terrible conversion rates, I guarantee you. And this is because they go with what looks fancy and what they think will convert, not what actually converts. You have to look at the data. And more often than not, and I'm talking 95% of the time here, easy, simple to read landing pages with nothing fancy on them. They normally look boring. These convert the absolute best, and you'll have tremendous success with it. Another thing is, please don't have like 32 different calls to actions, one or two at the most. Have a phone number, have an email uh, inquiry. That's all you need. Uh, people who have all these different ones, you're just creating all this stuff where the human eye has to bounce around and figure out what it has to do. Keep it simple. Keep it nice to read. Uh, that's all you have to do. One or two calls to actions at the most. Now, another thing is A-B testing headlines. And this is really important. A lot of people will, you know, test everything else on the landing page. The first thing everyone sees is the headline. David Ogilvy has a great point that 80% of your people should, will read your headline uh, and only 20% will actually read the body paragraph. So it's, you should spend all your money and time A-B testing essentially your headlines. Uh, I don't know if you should spend 80%, but a, a decent amount of your time should be spent, you know, testing out your headlines, making sure they really resonate with the customer and making sure they actually click on the button to either call you or give you their email. Um, but that's very important. Test the headlines, then move on to the rest of the actual a landing page and then you can move segments around you can adjust testimonials stuff like that and you can actually further optimize the actual landing page uh, now that being said test the main points again right below the headlines make sure this really speaks to the customer's problem you want to make sure you resonate with the customer's problem you identify it show them how you can solve it and then give them a call to action which is like you know call you or email you so your main points could be lifetime guarantee 24 7 service uh award winning stuff like this which really resonates and it really provides social proof and why they should pick you again you could also move around your landing page section as well just to adjust maybe testimonials resonate more with your customer so they should be higher up on the landing page maybe the award section should be lower whatever it is move around the landing page as a whole section. So most of the time we do this we'll see uh, slight change they are big enough that they warrant a actual change so you know it's up to you but I would suggest moving uh, some of the landing pages around later in the campaign just to see what you can do with it and the final thing is test social proof for landing pages I see this overlooked all the time people will just find a quote they'll just put it in the landing page it's just written out in like the actual landing page text and it looks terrible no one really believes it so what I recommend doing is copying and pasting 
an actual testimonial from like maybe Google reviews or home stars or home advisor, or whatever it is actually copying and pasting that, putting it in your landing page or website. This looks absolutely fantastic. And it proves to the customer like, yeah, this person actually has real clientele with real reviews. Cause this looks real and people trust these third party review sites a lot more than they trust like, you know, some sketchy review just written on a website. So that's the last part of landing pages. And that overall is how to optimize your Google ads campaign. Now there's a lot more you can do in your Google ads campaign. I'm sure I missed a whole bunch, but this is a lot of stuff you can do to optimize your Google ads campaign in 2022. It should bring you a whole bunch of success. If you adjust these things, you should see a, a lot better conversion rate. You should see your cost per lead going down, your, your click through rate going up, your ad rank going up, all these things, your account should be much more successful. So if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about optimizing your account inside Google ads, leave them down in the comment section down below. I'd be happy to answer them. Other than that, you guys have a wonderful day and take care.